Hello everybody, today I am in the Mushroom Kingdom on a nice vacation. No stress, no worries, just relaxing. What are you, beauty? Uh oh, looks like trouble. Let's roll the intro. It looks like Bowser is gone, but you can never be too sure. I've got an ID. Maybe if I review a Mario game, he'll leave us alone. It'll teach him. So let's review Super Mario Bros. Okay, just to be clear, for this review I'll be looking at the Super Mario All-Stars version of the game, which fixed some issues which I had with the original. And looks fancy. There's also that. Really? You want me to talk about the story in a Mario game? Alright, I'll try. You're a plumber, named Mario. This is the princess and she gets kidnapped by this evil turtle dude. This is off to a good start. Well, being a nice plumber you are, you go through 8 worlds to rescue your girlfriend. At least, I guess she's his girlfriend? But I mean, really, a princess and a plumber. I'm starting to see plot holes here. Maybe Mario's just a creep trying to get laid. I'll be honest, there's not very much to the story, but I really can't blame a game from 1985. I'll just go in the middle route and give it a 6 out of 10. It's nothing great, but it doesn't piss me off either. There's a way you have to keep in mind that I'm playing the Super Mario All-Stars version, where you have 16-bit sprites, and I must say, after playing 16-bit games for a while now because I've been doing a lot of retro stuff, I've started to appreciate 16-bit art style a lot more. Everything looks nice and colorful, and the different kind of stages mostly have different looks to them. Castle stages, underground stages, normal stages, and so on. My only problem with the game though is that all the worlds look rather similar. There's no visual representation that you're in a different world from before. I'd say the game is worth a 6 out of 10 for graphics. As a plumber you can't really do much except run and jump, but that's enough to make for an interesting experience. You've only got 3 actions, walking forward, jumping and walking backwards. Although the screen scrolls with you as you walk, it won't ever scroll back, so once you've passed something, it's gone. This might sound really boring, but the platforming in this game is actually rather challenging. Building up enough momentum to make a really tight jump, or landing on a really small platform, it makes for a good amount of fun. But wait, there's more. Mario can collect power-ups, which will, well, give him extra power. There's a mushroom to make Mario grow, flower to give Mario fire powers, and a star to give him a short time of invincibility. Defeating enemies is simple. You just jump on them. There you go. That's it. But if you just walk into them, you'll die. When you die, you obviously lose a life, and when you run out of lives, you get a game over. This is where I advise you to play the All-Stars version, because the original sends you all the way back to the beginning of the game, whereas the All-Stars version just sends you back to the beginning of the world you died in. The gameplay gets a solid 8 out of 10. If you know what you're doing, this literally should only take you 5 minutes to complete the game. That being said though, play the game normally and it'll take you a bit longer. Still, it shouldn't take you more than between half an hour and an hour. That being said, this game does have a lot of secrets and alternate pathways. If you're into exploring these kind of things, you can play through the game dozens upon dozens of times, because there's just a lot of stuff. Overall, the game has a good amount of time into it, so I'd give it a 7 out of 10. The music in Super Mario Bros is iconic for the games industry, but is that really because the music was actually good, or is it because Mario became such a huge success? Let's be honest, the music in the game isn't anything particularly great. It's atmospheric and it does fit the scenery. You're an underground level? The music is more ominous than normally. Bowser's Castle? Play the dramatic music? You're going for a nice swim, have some really relaxed music. It's not anything too out of the ordinary, but the music really manages to capture the feeling of the stage very well, and for that it gets a 7 out of 10. Especially since the All Souls version has read-on music, which is much better. At the fourth and last stage of every single world, there's a boss fight waiting for you. There's a total of 8 boss fights, which are all... Oh sir! Yeah, the only real difference is what kind of obstacles in your way, but the objective is the same. Jump over Bowser, hit the switch, and find out that your princess is another castle. I'll give the boss fights a 5 out of 10. That leaves us with a 6.7. The game is nothing too great, for its time it was amazing and it does hold up with today's standards if you play the All-Stars version, but it's nothing too fancy. I think it's done. I think we drove away Bowser. But he's not quite defeated yet. He's flat to the dark abyss we know as Super Mario Bros. 2. Join me next week and we continue our chase after Bowser. 
Or you can just go on to watch the other upload if you're watching this like a week after this video has been uploaded. That also works. I'll see you all back with the next video. Bye.